स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so so this question is how to find this generating function that is the biggest hurdle to do that we have to find out uh, the generating function by the so called uh, by the so called hamilton jacobi equations right so i call this as the hj equations so what are uh, so hj equations are are go are the first order just some information are the first order non linear non linear uh, partial differential equations whose solution whose solution gives gives the generating function the generating function phi uh, which gives which in which in turn gives the symplectic map okay which converts from one hamiltonian system to the other so this question is what is this equation okay so so this question is so once well so once we have solved the hamiltonian the hamilton jacobi equation we can readily find the solution to the hamiltonian via the set of implicit equations so what i said is the following so once the hj equations once a general a general solution to the hj equations hj equations is found the general solution to the hj equation is found then the solution the solution to the hamiltonian system hamiltonian system is found found via via the generating function right generating function okay in in the form of an implicit equation right we are going to see what do i mean by this statement okay very soon through an example okay so let me now describe this hamilton jacobi equation let us see what is this equation so note so and we are going to do that in the general case okay so suppose we are given a generating function so suppose there exists a generating function generating function phi right there exists a generating function phi such that such that the transformed hamiltonian the transformed hamiltonian hamiltonian h hat is zero so what am i saying is the generating function is such that the hamiltonian in the new coordinate frame capital p capital q is identically equal to zero right as simple as that right so then then it implies that the symplectic map the symplectic map produced the symplectic map produced by phi the symplectic map produced by phi leads to produced by phi leads to the following set of equations q k dot is partial h hat partial p k and p k dot is partial h partial q k right uh, this is the regular set of hamilton's equation or so the symplectic map produced by phi leads to the following notice that since h hat in this new frame is zero so the derivative will also be zero from here i see that my qk will be a set of constant and my pk's are a set of another constants right so so which means which means that since i have the hamiltonian in this transformed plane phase plane is zero uh let us go back few slides 
to the equation I am referring to. Uh, notice this particular equation. Notice this equation that I had described uh, to uh, that I had written to describe phi. So, now I am saying in this equation I am going to plug h hat equal to 0 and when we do that, when we do that, that we get that. So, this relation was, so this relation was, uh, let me call this as, let me call this relation as d. So, so from, from the relation d, I get that h of t comma q comma p bar plus the partial phi partial t is equal to 0 because h hat is 0 and that. Uh, so, notice that uh, my final relation should not contain any conjugate variables because conjugate variables are are a new new set of variables which we have to describe later. So, we 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 substitute, we eliminate, we eliminate, eliminate, eliminate p k s using, eliminate p k s using p k is equal to partial phi partial q k, eliminate p k equal to partial phi partial q k, ok. That is by a by our Hamilton's well that is the relation obtained from the generating function itself. Okay. So, when we do that I see the new set of equations are as follows. I see that h of t comma q bar comma. So, we get a vector set of relations namely partial phi partial q 1 partial phi partial q 2 and so on partial phi partial q uh, q n right plus partial phi partial t is equal to 0 right. Okay. So, this is uh, so this is the equation we were after and this is my well known h j equation or Hamilton Jacobi equation. So, to find the generating function, we have to solve this first order nonlinear partial differential equation. So, this is dot 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 uh, and let us see how what is the power of this equation. Okay. So, let us look at an example. We revisit our example of geometric optics, geometric optics where our functional j bar j of q bar was integral n of q bar times 1 plus q bar dot square d t right. Okay. So, in this example recall that recall that my Hamiltonian h of t comma q bar comma p bar is equal to this following function minus n square minus p square minus p 1 square minus p 2 square that is what we had found in that example and we are going to replace we are going to replace our p i's by uh, by the relation for the generating function right p i is by del phi del q i and so my so my Hamilton Jacobi equation in this case will be will be h plus del phi del t is equal to 0 or my h is the following, but my I replace my p i's by del phi del q i. So, I get that this is minus minus n square n itself is a function of q minus p 1 is partial phi partial q 1 square minus partial phi partial q 2 square this is plus partial phi partial t this is equal to 0. Okay. So, we can simplify this equation a little bit by taking this partial phi partial t on the other side and then take the square on both sides. I see that this is partial phi partial q 1 square 
plus partial phi partial q2 square uh, plus after all the simplification plus partial phi partial t square this is equal to n square. Now, uh, it seems or I can write down uh, I can write down this equation in a more compact form. This is my Hamilton's Jacobi equation. So, this is grad of phi the absolute value square is equal to n square where my grad is defined to be partial q 1 partial q 2 partial t right. Notice that this notice this equation if this equation is in suppose this equation is independent of t there is the phi is such that phi is independent of the independent variable then this equation is nothing but the Poisson equation right uh, the generalized Poisson equation. But given the time derivative this is the well known this is the well known econal equation for geometric optics. So, econal equation. So, people working in geometric optics will readily know this uh, this equation ok. Ok. So, I am not going to go beyond by and go ahead and solve this because it is quite complicated, but we will look at uh, we will look at uh, a few more relations that should be true for phi and we will look at some simpler case in order to see the power of Hamilton Jacobi equation ok. So, few more concepts I want to introduce. So, I call my phi which is phi of t comma q bar comma uh, q bar well I call this as phi of t comma q bar comma alpha bar where so where alpha bar is a constant right where did this uh, substitution come from again go back few slides if we go back few slides notice that the symplectic map for the Hamilton Jacobi equation led to the following that q is equal to alpha. So, that is the reason that we substituted q bar to be alpha bar where alpha and betas are constants ok. So, these are all constants. So, suppose so this is uh, this is complete right complete. So, the definition of complete has to do with the definition of uh, the necessary existence of derivatives. Uh, so, we see that this generating function is complete if if phi has continuous continuous second uh, partial derivatives second partial derivatives with respect to its uh, with respect to its variables with respect to the the variables q k alpha k notice that I am conveniently on some occasions I am conveniently saying that alpha k is constant and on some other occasions I am conveniently saying that alpha k is variable. Uh, there is no confusion because alpha k is nothing but our our uh, coordinates q capital Q. So, when I say that when I take the derivative with respect to a variable they can be conveniently switched with capital Q right. Uh, so, so what what I am saying is alpha bar can be can be thought can be thought of uh, capital Q bar whenever whenever convenient right whenever convenient right can be thought of as capital Q bar whenever convenient ok. So, this is complete with risk. Uh, so, if second partial derivative exists and and what I have is the following Hessian matrix which is partial partial to phi of partial q j uh, partial alpha k of j comma k this is the hessian matrix is non singular right. So, let us say we have a situation where we can invert the relation for phi or phi is complete. So, in that situation I can write down the relation between the Hamiltonian system and the Hamilton Jacobi equation. So, what I am trying to do is 
writing down the connection between between the Hamiltonian the Hamiltonian and the Hamiltonian system and the Hamilton Jacobi equation right where does Hamilton Jacobi equation fit in right and I state this result in the form of a theorem theorem 16 says the theorem by Hamilton Jacobi says that suppose suppose I am given a function phi which is phi of t q bar alpha bar is a complete it is a complete uh, complete solution to the Hamilton Jacobi equation. So, where is my solution to the H j equation? Well, I need to number some equations here. So, my H j equation is this following. So, this I term it as A. So, this is my H j equation. So, so equation 1. Okay. So, suppose phi is a complete solution to equation 1 then then the general the general solution to the hamiltonian system the general solution to the hamiltonian system right system the general system this system q dot k which is given by del h del p k slash p dot k which is minus del h del q k. So, the general solution to the Hamiltonian system is given by is given by the following set of equations is given by del phi del alpha k is equal to minus beta k. So, these are an arbitrary constant this is an arbitrary constant and uh, let and the second relation is del phi del q k is equal to p k right. So, so well this is my generalized momenta. So, this is my momenta. Okay. So, what this theorem says I have stated this theorem without proof is that once we have solved the Hamilton Jacobi equation and find the generating function then we can directly find the extremal solution uh, q via the set of these two relations given by 1 and 2 from the generating function. Okay. So, the so this is what we have done. So, this question that we have to ask is how to obtain how to obtain. So, this is the gist of this theorem how to obtain a solution based on based on the Hamilton Jacobi equation right. The answer is as follows we determine we determine uh, Hamiltonian H. So, we start by finding the Hamiltonian function H, right. Then the next step is we form we form the Hamilton Jacobi equation or the H j equation with with the help of the Hamiltonian. The third step is we find we find the solution the complete solution phi, right of of the Hamilton Jacobi equation not phi prime, but phi right which is the generating of the H j equation right. Then the fourth step is we set up the moment we know phi we differentiate phi with respect to the constant and set up these two equations. We set up we set up specially the first equation beta k is negative phi del phi del alpha k where where beta k's are constants and arbitrary constant and finally we solve we solve for n equations we solve for n equations in d we solve for n equations in d uh, so these are my set of n equations to find to find my answer q k which is my extremal solution uh, for q k to get to get uh, the general solution the solution q bar of t comma 
alpha bar comma beta right ok. Ok, let us see this, uh, this strategy in, with the help of an example. So, this is the example I have in mind. So, find extremize, extremize uh, f of y given by this functional from a to b y prime square dx. Now, this is a very, very simple example and I do not want to solve this example using Euler Lagrange, but I want to use the Hamilton Jacobi equation and we will show that the solution obtained is identical to the one obtained by Euler Lagrange. Okay. So, the first step, the step A is to find the Hamiltonian. So, the Hamiltonian is given by, in our previous lecture we have shown if this is my f, my Hamiltonian is given by minus f plus y prime p, right, where, where my, where my p is my p is partial f partial y prime. So, from by plugging in the value of f, I see that this is also equal to y prime square and this is also equal to p square by 4, right. Now, from here I see I can find the Hamilton Jacobi equation. So, that is my step b. My Hamilton Jacobi equation is my independent variable this time is x. So, x is my independent variable, right, independent variable. So, the derivative partial phi partial t will be partial phi partial x. So, I have the equation as follows del phi del x plus the Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian which is h of x comma y comma comma y prime, right. So, comma p, right. Now, I replace my p with del phi del y, right. Note that that is what we have said earlier. We replace, well, we replace, we replace p by del phi del q i in our case q i is y or the dependent variable, okay, and set it equal to 0. So, when we do that, when we do that, my, my Hamilton's equation becomes partial phi partial x plus p square by 4. So, Hamil Hamiltonian is p square by 4, but p square is phi del phi del y. So, it becomes 1 by 4 times del phi del y whole square set equal to 0. Now, Note, so from here on we have to solve this equation. So, the step C tells us to find the solution to this Hamilton Jacobi equation. We assume a solution which is variable separable. So, assume uh, phi of x comma y to be of the form u x plus v y, right. So, separable solution. Right now, we are assuming that I can separate my solution. In a later lecture, I will show how to separate uh, this solution. So, assume a separable solution. So, which means that, which means that this equation tells us that uh, d u d x, d u d x, uh, d u d x. Uh, so, d u d x plus one fourth d, well, d v d y square is equal to 0. And from here, I see that, uh, well, th these two are equal to each other. Note that this is completely a function of x. This is completely, so this is a function of x. This is a function of y and they are, they can only, so let me, let me first rewrite in this form. So, this is equal to minus of one fourth of dv dy square. Now, this is a function of x and this is a function of y. And that is only possible when both are constants, since they are equal to each other, right. So, so which means, which means my d u d x is a constant. Let me call the d u d x a constant to be minus alpha square, right. Okay. So, from here, I see that u of x is minus alpha square x plus a constant gamma, right. Now, this means that one fourth 
from the Hamilton Jacobi equation plugging in du dx which is minus alpha square I get that 1 fourth dv dy whole square minus alpha square is equal to 0 and from here I can solve for v of y which tells me that v of y is 2 alpha uh, 2 alpha y plus beta I do not care about the sign of alpha here because alpha is a constant it does not matter right. So, I have retained the positive sign here. So, which means, which means my generating function phi of x comma y is u x plus v y which is also equal to minus alpha square x plus gamma plus plus 2 alpha y plus beta and I see that, I see that. Uh, so, once I have the extreme, uh, the generating function, the next stage is to set up is to set up a partial phi partial uh, alpha equal to a constant let us say equal to a constant. Well, we have note that in phi we have three constants alpha, gamma, beta. If we take the derivative of phi with respect to gamma or beta we are going to get 1 is equal to a constant. So, there is no new relation. So, differentiation with respect to gamma with respect to gamma and beta uh, gives gives an identity gives identity identity 1 is equal to a constant so there is no new information so this is this is quite trivial right so now we are going to differentiate so we are going to differentiate with respect to with respect to the constant alpha which is this constant right so when we when we set up this equation, I see that I see that the following uh, relation comes out. With respect to alpha, when we differentiate, I see that uh, two y minus so two y minus two alpha x is equal to a constant, right? Or I see that the equation is y is equal to alpha x plus a constant which is nothing but the equation of a straight line equation of a straight line and that is the solution to or that is the extremal that we have found directly from our Hamilton Jacobi equation. Let us before we wrap up our lecture session let us quickly look at the same uh, equation or the same formulation via the Euler Lagrange condition. Let us find the extremal via Euler Lagrange. So, notice that the functional f of y is integral from a to b y prime dx uh, square and note that the Euler Lagrange equation gives me uh, partial f partial y prime d dx is equal to when we plug in well minus partial f partial y when we plug in f I see that I get y double prime is equal to 0 and the solution to this gives me y is equal to m x plus c which is a straight line. So, the solution via the Hamilton Jacobi matches with the solution via the Euler Lagrange. So, hence uh, Hamilton Jacobi method is an alternative to the Euler Lagrange method and it is quite a powerful alternative. Now, in the next lecture we are going to look at in more depth the power of Hamilton Jacobi equation and also look at the cases or the conditions under which we are able to separate variables in our generating function. So, thank you very much for listening. Uh, thanks a lot.